So in today's video, I want to bring up a gun that's having its 10 year anniversary of being introduced to the game back in 2014. The weapon has been a class for many years and is still a lot of people's favorite weapon to use. The weapon I'm referring to is the Amprex. So before we start, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been subscribing and liking the videos recently. I do appreciate it and it is very much so appreciated. So I hope to keep producing more content that y'all will enjoy. Anyway, when it comes to the Amprex, it has just hit its 10 year anniversary as it has come out in 423 2014 and it is now 423 2024. So how have the stats held up since 2014? Well, they are 32% crit chance, it has a 2.20 times crit multiplier, and has about 22% status. Now the weapon does have a, a set of downsides. It has almost a 3 second reload speed at about 2.60 seconds. It has very low total damage at about 22. Once again, I have rifle aptitude on, so this is just a tad bit higher, a rifle amp. And it has very low dispo at about 8, like 0.85. So how does it feel if you just don't mod it? How does it act? Well, whenever you attack an enemy, it chains up to four. The first one taking 100%, next one taking 50, I believe 25, and then 13.5%. But as you see, it still does quite all right damage and has quite high chances to proc electricity. So with the weapon obviously being primarily at electricity damage, you can make builds with corrosive, radiation, magnetic, etc. But obviously you want to build around what faction you're fighting. So when it comes to the builds today, I have two. One of them is an early game build and the other one is a late game build. The early game build should be able to take you through the entire star chart as long as you mod it to what you're fighting. Like you're not going to build corrosive to fight the corpus. You're going to build toxin or magnetic, etc. And with a grenade, you're going to build corrosive heat radiation, etc. So I'm going to show off both builds. Like I said, we'll be doing two builds. So before I show off, well, I will show off. Something I want to clarify is the damage on the targets as it arcs. It arcs 100% on the main target, 50 on the first person it chains to, 25 on the second, and 12.5 on the third. So headshotting the original target also does not affect the chain damage, so there's no real need to perfectly aim. But there is a reason to build a uh, shred because it does help it hit further. So with this build, we'll be going with corrosive heat. We have split chamber, shred, vital sense, critical delay, serration, malignant force, high voltage, and thermite rounds. This is not necessary, but I do recommend it, and obviously since this is early, I do not expect anybody to have an arcane. So, how does it handle on level 100 enemies? Because I do not believe you really should be fighting anything higher than that in the early game. But granted, it has been a minute since I have been playing just the normal game. Well, handles that guy quite well, and handles the row that it goes up against quite nicely. Keeps it, as you see though, with Shred on, it arcs even more. Bouncing off to him, 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 and him. And as you see, it does quite good damage for these guys. And like I said earlier, this build should be able to handle basically any version of a armored enemy, obviously. As long as you just build around what you're fighting. So if you're not fighting the Grenier or the Corrupted like I am, you'll swap this over to like Magnetic, Toxin, if you can somehow just get it by itself. Which usually involves swapping out electricity for something, etc. You will build to what you are needing to fight. But what about the late game build? We'll go over that next. So let's go ahead and cover the late game build. Now with the late game build, we have stacking mods and that will vary from the early one because now you need to actually get kills to get these to go higher and higher to get more benefits over time. We'll also be adding my Riven. Granted, my Riven is not in the best state it could be. I've rolled it a few too many times, but I think I could get better and I obviously can get better. But right now this is what we're using. Now this build is similar to the previous one, except now we're going to be using my Riven, like I said, and an Arcane. The Arcane we're going to try is Primary Frostbite. I feel it to be quite fun to use, but obviously you can use Primary Merciless. So how does it handle? Well, obviously we need to get a kill. Let's go ahead and get Steel Path enemies and max them out. I said max them out. So how does it handle? Well, obviously you need to ramp up your thing. You're, you're running Galvanized mods, so let's get kills. As you see, I'm critting quite often with no pet on, so I have no bonuses. And as you can tell, it doesn't struggle at all to really get kills. And with primary frostbite, you're getting critical damage. You're also getting multi-shot, etc. Now, obviously, it's going to struggle a little bit with heavy, heavy armored enemies because we're just using cold and not heat. But obviously, if you have a better ribbon than mine, you can mod around this. Which is why I say primary merciless usually can work quite well. So you could technically run like uh, 
trying to think. You can run corrosive heat, you can run corrosive radiation and heat, which is what I was running at one point. But obviously, I find it, the cold to be a little bit more fun right now because it's quite interesting to see everything get frozen and then proc more and keep going. But obviously, uh, you could change this. Hell, I if I wanted to, I could technically add prime prior rounds if I add another depolarity, but obviously I am not doing that. But what if I say took off cold, obviously, and went with heat? Well, we add thermite rounds. We take off primary frostbite and we go with primary merciless. Well, we should see roughly the same thing, but a tad bit better because we're actually going to be taking advantage of the fact that we're running corrosive. Once again, you have to get kills to ramp it up. So kill the first guy we see and keep going. Does quite well on him. Let it arc off enemies, let it kill whoever it can. And apply the status statuses it has. Now, a lot of people will say to run a viral slash build. You can run whatever builds you like. And as you see, radiation and heat works very well with each other. Especially if you can hit that shot. It does help. But obviously, you're not just going to be doing, eh, doing this with nothing. What happens if you mix more frames into this build? Well, like I had said, what happens if you mix four frames into this? Well, obviously, we're running a Corrosive build, so you know who I'm going to be bringing out. We're obviously going to bring out Hydro. Hydro is here to make the gun, obviously. Take advantage of the fact it's running Corrosive. This is the Corrosive Heat version as well, so how does it fare? So, obviously, you're going to hit a Plunder. We're not even going to apply Viral or anything, even though I could with my Tempest Barrage. How does it handle with just Plunder? Well, obviously it takes off their armor and well it does its job it slaughters Do doesn't even need viral but uh, once again you could run viral slash if you really want to a lot of people do just purely because the weapon is such high crit chance but say we went back to the cold build primary frostbite and we add if i could prime cryo rounds but if i form a dion this wouldn't work so we're gonna go back to normal cryo rounds how would it fare well, once again, let's get Steel Path enemies. And hit just one ability. We don't need more than one. So, how does it fare with Cold and Corrosive? About the same thing, just with a bit more, uh, I believe, crit damage. And almost feels like it's a little bit faster. I would say I can't aim, so uh, do with that info as you will. But obviously, there is one more build we can do. And it's simple, actually. Just pull out Mirage. Mirage, in my opinion, makes a lot of these weapons really good. So, obviously, you summoner, you get your Hall of Mirrors, and you pop your new Eclipse. So, how does it fare? Well, with extra beams, more damage. If I could aim, more stuff would die a little faster, but I am probably the worst when it comes to aiming. But obviously, a lot of enemies don't just stand in what feels like really crappy single file lines. So, I'm going to go ahead and get my build situated, and we'll go to Steel Path and see how it handles in an actual mission. So, here we are in Steel Path. I brought along Moxie, my uh, Panzer Wolf Pilot, to spread viral for whenever I need it, and we brought Mirage, Dual Icors, and my Lex. So, go ahead and start the mission. So, when it comes to the Amprex, I'll go ahead and babble on about what I've done with it. Uh, funnily enough, it was actually the first weapon I got a Riven for, so I really do, and I did enjoy it for, like, a long time. And I could have said for a long period of time as well, but it was probably one of my favorite weapons. Obviously, I started gaining more favorites as time progressed, and I found weapons to be better than, obviously, as most things are. But does it still hold up in 2024, and is it still worth using? Which was the whole point of, of today's video. Figuring out if it's still worth using. And if you asked me, I'd say it is for a good portion of the game. It is a phenomenal early game weapon and should be brought alongside you for well, the entirety of the star chart if you like beam weapons. Because as you can tell, watching a whole like crowd of enemies, which is what they're doing, which is clumping, just, just explode is phenomenal. As you see, I don't really have to even try. I'm just holding down left click and watching them all just explode. No problems associated with it. And like I said, you can use Primary Frostbite, Primary Merciless, whatever you're really rocking for the late game build, rock it. The early game build, the weapon will struggle, obviously, because you won't have high crit, like 100 over. But with a good ribbon, you can easily go 100 over, and it's quite useful. 
Hell, even without using the uh, damage part of Eclipse, and I'm actually using the defense part, it still does quite well. Honestly, since I was getting surrounded, I thought I'd use the defense. But obviously, how does it work? As you can tell, it's quite hard. It does a lot of damage, has no real issues, and in case y'all are wondering, we have a Solar Eclipse, we're running Adaptation, Galvanized Aptitude, we have Molt Augmented on, Primary Frostbite, we're getting Tenacious Bond for my pet because my crit chance is high enough to proc it, and we have Galvanized Sharon for even more Molt Shot. So, I'm going to keep going until we get a uh, Acolyte to spawn, and I'll be back with y'all when one spawns. And just as a little side thing, since I did not show it off yet, uh, there is a Eximus unit somewhere in this mix, but let me try to find it real fast and I can show you how it handles Eximus units. There he is. As you see, handles it quite well. But like I said, I'll be back again whenever I get a Acolyte to spawn. All right, uh, we got a Acolyte to finally spawn, so let's see who we're going to get. Ah, Mania. Go ahead and pre-reload the gun. So how does it handle against Mania? Well, obviously we need to get through the shield, and once we get through the shield, oh, as you see, it just starts... Why am I not able to hit you? Well, let's get some of these ads first real quick. Get them, and can I hit you now? Oh, wait, am I... Oh, there we go. I forgot, they were using uh, one of their abilities. But as you see, it doesn't have that many issues attacking the uh, Acolyte at all. And as you see, it still handles hordes quite well. Literally just turned all of them into nothing. Now, like I would say before, okay, I'm flying. Uh, some of my info may be wrong. Obviously, it is quite late when I make this video as I sleep. So do take some of the info if it may be wrong, if you look it up and find out it's wrong, with a grain of salt because it's late and I tried my best. For example, on the Shred thing, I think I am wrong on it, but I could be right that Shred makes it bounce further. I know Sinister Beam does not, though. But I will go ahead and head back to my Orbiter and give you all my final thoughts on the weapon on if it is still worth using in 2024. So overall, when it comes to the Ambrex, I do still think it has a place in people's inventory. I still think it has a reason to be used quite often as it is really not a bad weapon to use at all. It, it does have its issues, obviously, as it is not one of the strongest weapons of all time with all the Incarnons existing and all that, but it's still very strong. And, well, it basically is a star chart support weapon. It's been that way for quite a while. Obviously, it's dependent on what you're fighting, build for what you need to kill, etc. Even if you don't want to, you, you don't have to add a ribbon. If you want one, add one, and you don't need it. And earlier, like I said, uh, punch through actually will cause the main beam to chain independently from each additional target hit, so potentially doubling or tripling the damage output when fired into a crowd. That's why you see all those enemies just explode, basically. That's why it's very nice. Now, obviously, it's its anniversary. Would I say it is the best weapon from 2014? Probably not, because I genuinely don't know what all weapons were added in 2014. But is it a really good beam weapon? Yes. If you want one that's not for crowds, go with the Synapse. Synapse is also a very good beam weapon. It's more single target, but it does the job. Amprex is crowds. Synapse is singular. Uh, the Atomos is a secondary. The Kuvanukor is a secondary. The Cycron and the Larkspur. All those are secondaries, except the Larkspur. The Larkspur is an art gun. All do about the same thing. They're all beam weapons. Some chain, some are single target. Each one has their thing. But... I hope you guys do have a great rest of your day. Make sure you guys hit that sub button and hit that bell for post notifications and hit the like and comment what weapons you want to see me review next. I do appreciate all the comments y'all give and I do still have a ton of weapons to review. Remember though, next week on the 1st, there will be hopefully a Protea Prime, Velox, and an Okina Prime video coming out. Other than that, see you guys next time. Peace out.